All right, let's stand as we worship. We've got a new one with you for you this morning. It's called Take Your Shoes Off Moses. A little country folk music this morning. Hope you enjoy. just say hey welcome I hope it's been a good week for everyone you know I've really missed these times together that we can you know come and fellowship and encourage each other and worship and as we uh, look ahead into the future you know we feel like we want to do more together even during the week and so those are things that we're looking at and we really don't want to just talk about it we want to do it and I know one thing that we're looking forward to doing with the teenagers is trying to get an event together where we can go and see a good Christian concert or something and so we're talking about doing one of those soon so if you're a teen I hope that's something you uh, maybe can look forward to with us as we'll come together and, and go and do that uh, here hopefully in the next few weeks or month but uh, again I just want to say welcome if you're here in person uh, or if you're online we're glad that you're here we hope that you know really this won't just be an hour where you're here and you're saying well hey I did church online or in person and it was good but that you'll feel like wow I was really charged up and changed and now for the remainder of the week I feel ready to go you know ready to do her do her again because that's what this is about it isn't about just coming leaving forgetting whatever it is happened but being changed and changed for the good and changed for God. Let's pray right now. Father, again, I thank you that we can be here in this place. We take it for granted, Lord, because it may not always be that that is the case. But Lord, we are thankful that today we can say it is. And you are here. You are present. We don't have to say, come and God worship with us. We need to be saying, Lord, help us to hear what you're saying to us 
and help us to respond in obedience today, Lord, as we worship you. We give you the praise. In Jesus' name, everyone said, amen. 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 Uh, so what we want really is for God to reveal to us what he wants to say to us. So Father, open the eyes of our hearts today.
again, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Today, being the second Sunday, there is no church service for the children today. Annual picnic. Our church annual picnic is rescheduled to take place on Sunday, September 22nd at 12.30 at Lake Dorothy. Please sign up with the sign-up sheet in the foyer, letting us know how many are coming and what food dish you'd be able to bring. Any questions, please see Margie or Joey. The bi-monthly prayer meeting. We will have our next prayer meeting on Tuesday, September 10th at 5.30. We'd love to have more people be able to uh, participate, and, but recognize that due to other commitments, it's not always easy to be here in the building. So if you'd like to be a part of the prayer meeting, you can join us online. Just see Pastor Gage, and he'll give you the Zoom link. Men's uh, weekly gathering. We will be meeting again Thursday at noon for Sweet Henry's there in Norton. Please feel to uh, bring a friend and join us for great food and company. Outdoor music service. We will be having an outdoor music service Sunday, September 29th at 10.30. So please pray for good weather. Trunk or treat. We will reach out to our community again this year by participating in the trick or treat. I think this must be trunk. Trunk or treat festivals. Festivities. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no problem, words of it. Anyhow, uh, we will be having our annual trunk or treat here at the church. We encourage everyone to decorate the cards and pass out whatever goodies they like. We'd also like to have a man to table at the, uh, to collect prayer requests and getting contact information for those attendees that would be comfortable in giving them. Prayer requests. In your bulletin today, we have these prayer requests that we are starting to include. And if you have, let's see here, if you are more than you are more than welcome to let Pastor Gage know of any requests that you have, and any other uh, and another way for you to request them as well. Please feel free to fill out the information you'd like, drop it in the tithes and offerings request at the back of the church. Also, in that same box is for tithes and offerings, or you can also give online at calvarywrestling.net. So, is there any other praises, announcements, woohoos? <laughs> Anybody? Wait a minute. Go for it. So, um, when um, the church starts and it comes to 10 o'clock, I really like that. That's one of my prayers. Oh, that's fine. Cool. Right. That's Amen, fine. buddy. I love when it starts with so. Uh, that's right. <laughs> praise the Lord. That's fine. I just want to praise God for my church. Yes. Everybody here is just so dedicated. Yeah. And, uh, that shows a lot. And I also want to praise God because I can praise God through the storms. Yeah. And uh, he never leaves us, you know. So just praise God even when you're going through a hard time. Well, I praise God for your enthusiasm and for our worship team. I know often we sort of take things for granted, but we are blessed in many ways. And I just give God thanks for that. And for each of you, for our families, you know, there's a lot going on, but when we're in this cultural storm or whatever you know we're going through right now, it's encouraging to know that God is here with us. Amen. And as a church family, we're together. Great. Um, I praise God for good parents. This week has been a really rough week for me, and honestly, I don't know how I would have gotten through it without my dad. They were supporting me through everything. They were helping me get through it and encouraging me. I do want to make an announcement right now, and I praise God that we have an extra room up there for this as well for Children's Church. You know, we have some people up in the nursery right now and different things going on, but um, just uh, I'm, I'm thankful that we are moving forward with getting stuff done to our basement. Um, you know, we're, we're looking at a couple different things and possibilities, but it's looking like it's going to be, you know, a lot less expensive than what we were planning. So that is something to give God praise for. 
uh, to get the bowed wall fixed and then you know to repair at least this end of the basement so we can get the kids back down there safely and all that um, we're not going to be doing children's church down in the basement though until we get that rest of the stuff fixed at this one end just be aware we will still be doing it up there we will start potlucks though potlucks back in um, october which you know i'm excited about that but we really are moving ahead to get this basement taken care of so um you know that's encouraging so we're i want to give people an update we had people look at it and uh we were you know i think overall terry peggy and i and, and the bears and others are excited about what we're going to be doing and having done so i uh, just know that we are looking at getting it resolved and doing it soon so we're thankful <coughs> Thank you, worship team. That is what it's all about, isn't it? You know, it's about Him. It's about doing what He wants us to do. And, you know, uh, knowing that, 
uh, let's go to him in prayer here uh, right now and talk to him about, you know, one of the most important things I think we can do is pray. You know, it's all about Jesus. If we believe that and we're saying in prayer that we trust him with the requests that we bring to him. And we want to do that. And there are, like we said, a variety of things that we can be praying for people specifically that we want to be praying for. As I get ready and geared up to talk about this new discipleship series that I'll be looking at, you know, I'm excited that, you know, by praying for people by name, and I pray this will be a clear challenge for each of you, that we'll realize that will help us remember them more clearly when they have various things that we need to be praying for. And we're going to want to reach out to them in a whole new way that will reignite our own faith uh, and help us to want to help others come to know Jesus and grow as disciples. So when we say it's all about him, we mean that. And if we believe that, we understand then what's most important, and that's fulfilling the calling of the only one that really matters, and that's Jesus Christ. And he says to come, follow me and make disciples of other nations, and make disciples of those that are in your lives. I mean, that's what we want to do. But before we uh, get to that message, I want to go to God in prayer right now. And let's uh, bow before him. Either you can do it uh, with your heart, uh, you can do it physically through your posture, but I'm just asking that we'll humble ourselves before the Lord, recognizing we're going before the one uh, who can do anything as we approach him. Father, we thank you, Jesus, that we are a people here today saying we are excited to express our faith and our trust in you. And during this prayer time, God, we are not here talking to a dead God or someone who can't hear what we're saying. God, you not only hear us, you know our hearts, you see what we're experiencing. So Lord, I pray that whatever anyone is dealing with, Lord, uh, that you will reach out to them and touch their life and help them through what they're experiencing. Remind them today that they are not alone. But there is someone who is ever present with them. Especially as a Christian, we go through dry times. We go through seasons of life where we feel like not everything is going like we want, or maybe we feel like we're far from the Lord, like our relationship is struggling. But thank you, Lord, that even through those times, you were there. And you want to remind us that you're never going to leave us. So I pray that if that's someone in here, that God, you're going to come right now alongside them, loving them, wrapping your arms around them, healing their hearts and helping them through whatever they're experiencing. And I pray they will give you the praise as a result. And Lord, I ask that you'll also be with others as maybe they're struggling mentally. Maybe they're going through these seasons in their life where they're like, you know, I feel overwhelmed. I feel like, you know, I'm just stressed out. Things aren't getting better, but my trust has not wavered. And I pray that God, as a result, you will comfort them, strengthen them, help them, Lord, to feel that new energy as a result of recognizing that, Father, you are going to help them and that you're going to heal them of this mental illness maybe that they're struggling with at the time. Because honestly, I feel like sometimes we're going through, everything's going great, but then there are those times when they're not so great and we feel ashamed to tell someone else, mentally I'm struggling, but God, I ask that if that's someone in here that they'll feel your touch on their life and that their mind will experience peace and new joy. And then Lord, you'll give us the gumption and the... the uh, desire to keep going and to keep living in a world which it seems like, Lord, is not friendly to Christians. But God, I know that we have a God who serves right alongside us and says, keep going. I am not giving up on you. Do not give up on me. And so, Father, knowing that is the case, help us, Lord, to be strong and courageous, not to give up when the world says, give up. Don't keep going. You have nothing to live for. I pray we will remember we have everything to live for. And it's because we have a relationship with the Jesus. We don't give up. We don't give in. We keep going. We don't fear. Yeah, there will be those seasons where we may have little fears. But God, keep us strong. Keep us going. Not giving up, God. I pray that, Lord, you'll help those such as Joey. I know she was fine with this being lifted up. God, I pray for different things she's experiencing, uh, especially as it concerns her hip pain. So, Father, I pray for real guidance and clarity for the doctors as they take next steps with shots and 
possible surgery down the road. We are praying that maybe that won't have to happen, God, and that you'll work it out some other way. God, we know there are others who are experiencing physical pains or illnesses, and you know what they're going through. Lord, it seems like lately there's a lot of people getting sick. I don't know if it's because school just started. There's a lot of different things going around, flus, COVID, whatever. But God, I pray that there will be a healing in their lives and that, Lord, there will be comfort. And ultimately, even through those times, they will draw closer to you. And ultimately, that's what you're telling us as Christians to do, to help a world that is lost to be found and to help them grow as disciples so that we can together say we are one in Jesus. And so I pray that, God, as we look ahead and we recognize, God, where you want us to be as a church, we're going to say in Barberton that, Father, we're going to be that light to this world. We're going to help people find hope and healing, finding freedom over their addictions, finding strength when they feel like giving up. And Father, we're going to do it because you've called us to make disciples and to go, to take up our cross, to follow you in a world that says, oh no, seek convenience, seek comfort. And if it's not about you, they just uh, give up on anything that causes you to have to sacrifice. But Father, we're here to say we're taking up our cross and we're following you. I pray for those who are joining us online. Glad to see Brother Robert Rue on there. And Father, I pray you will continue to give him strength, continue to help him through his healing, Lord, through this process of, of Father, uh, post-transplant, finding new strength. Uh, God, thank you that he got the kidney transplant that he needed. I thank you, Lord, that uh, Brother Paul, who joins us week in and week out, Shire, God, got the liver transplant that he needed. Continue to help him as he is walking more and gaining new strength, Lord. I pray you will be with others as they're joining us, praying that, God, you have your way in our lives and you give us the strength, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Together, everyone said, Amen. Amen. As one body, right? And we have a lot to be excited about that we can come together and say that together. And boy, I'm glad to see back there in yellow, uh, Miss uh, Marge Bennett. You know, I was thinking about you and missing you. I know you've been experiencing a lot. We're just glad to see you. And boy, you know, she does bring, you know, we, we joke with each other. And she probably doesn't know how to take me sometime, but, you know, whether I'm serious. But it really means a lot to see you when you're here. And, you know, and she brings a lot of joy to the church and this family and helps out in a lot of different ways. And you know what? We all need that. And we all need to chuckle and laugh from time to time. You know, my wife, she's got it firsthand. She looks at me every day and chuckles. Right? Uh, yeah, okay. But we're going to talk today and begin looking at a series that, that I've called a Discipleship Made Simple. Because ultimately, if you knew there was something that could help the church, there's something that can help you as a Christian remind you of the number one thing above everything that God is calling you to do, wouldn't you want to know how to do it better? Because that's what this is. Discipleship. Often people are like, well, I think I'm making disciples, you know, and they just go here and there and everywhere and don't even really know what direction to go in. But if we know as a church, this is the desire of God's heart for us to be disciple makers. How can we do it and do it better? So really, this is I, I almost thought about naming this series Discipleship for Dummies. But then I thought that's harsh. And I don't want to be called a pastor that's calling other people dummies. And if that gets around them, they'll be like, uh -huh, why would I want to go there? He'll really make me feel better. He's going to call me a dummy. No, I'm not. Okay. But uh, what I mean by that is that we want it to be simple to understand. And so that's what this series is about. Well, a William Culbertson once wrote in the publication Christianity Today of the joy of discipleship. And he said, I find that discipleship means first truly living. It does not mean a joy ride to heaven. It does not mean that there are no trials and no burdens, but it does mean peace in your soul and joy in your heart and a sense, a supreme sense of the smile of the Lord upon you. All right. And that reminds me, Robert Rue just said online, uh, Eric, it's all right to smile. 
All right, he wanted to make sure you knew that. He gets up here, you know, uh, we want to smile, all right? And ultimately when we smile, uh, you know, we want it to be real and genuine because as a disciple of Jesus, we have everything to smile about. But if we let the news convince us of what we should be excited about, that's nothing. And we get down and we get out, but discipleship means that you are using your time on earth to the best possible advantage. And why should we do that? Because Jesus says to. He is our commander in chief. And honestly, we are each given so long to roam on this planet. And we need to take seriously the business of Christian discipleship and what it means to make disciples. Yet often I fear that we hear that and believe, well, I don't know what to do uh, because it's too hard to come up with how to be a disciple, so I'm just not even going to try. Or maybe as a church, we're like, you know what, that's our call, but we're just going to do things like they've always been done. We're going to you know, try to reach new people. We're going to try to do this and do that. But when it comes to Christian growth and how to be a disciple, that's too difficult. Let that go to the elite Christians. Let that be their task. But did you know it's to be the task of every Christian? We can all be disciple makers. You don't have to be an extrovert. You can be an introvert. And so we'll talk about real practical ways. I mean, really, with some of the things I'm going to be talking about with us, and a lot of these are great ideas from other Christians, I really believe each of us in here can start to look at discipleship as something that really isn't that difficult, and God calls all of us to do it. So my prayer is that through this new series, that each of us are going to get the gist that neither should we think that it's just for certain individuals or uh, somebody else, uh, but we will know that it's for all of us. In fact, we know in the Bible that Jesus told his disciples that uh, through the Great Commission, we are to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So we can know that God calls anyone, so that's everyone that is a believer, to make disciples. But what does that mean, make disciples? In Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, Jesus gets at this when he states, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. You know, I think, and I've read this recently, one of the biggest enemies of Christianity is comfort. You know, we think that it's our role here in America to be comfortable in everything that we do. So we don't want to give up anything, even if God is calling us to live that kind of a life. So know that we need to stop making, though, the process of discipleship so complicated and see it really can be un uncomplicated. And that's why I'm really loving this book that I'm reading now by Dr. Warren Haynes, and it's called Discipleship Uncomplicated. And so what this concerns is how we could be those who help others follow Jesus. So if Jesus says, make disciples, what you're really saying or what he is saying to us is help tell others how to follow me. So this entire series will be devoted to helping each of us feel encouraged that all of us can do this. And we're going to be looking at several principles through this series that will help us do that. And the first one we're going to look at is what it means to love God and love people. Because God says, you know, this is the heart of discipleship. If you love me, you will love people. That's why it always gets and irks me when someone says, yes, I love coming to church. Because I love God, but I don't love the people that are there. Does that make sense? Because if you truly love God, you love the person no matter who they are. You know, you may not want to be around them all the time. I will admit there are people in that life, in my life, that are like that, I feel like. But I love them, and God calls us to love everyone. So let's get at this, what it means to be a disciple who makes disciple and understands it really is simple. 
Because honestly, compadres, if we can't love God or we can't love people, we cannot make disciples. And further, we can't be Christians. So today we need to understand that if we say we want to make disciples, it simply comes down to loving him first and loving people, period. Okay, there are no add-ons or additions, period, that's it. So before we dig into the specific points that I want to look at further with you, it might help to have more of a simple but true meaning for what I am saying when I use the term disciple. According to Dr. Warren Haynes in that book I recently referred to, Discipleship Uncomplicated, a disciple is a person who emulates his life, wears his words, and embodies his mission. The his being Jesus. Basically, a disciple is a Jesus lookalike. They are like him. And friends, I hope you will find true today that to follow the example of Jesus, to walk in his steps, you need a life that is fueled by the love of God for him and for those he made. For this to be realized in our lives as far as recognizing the role that love plays, if we're to be true disciples of Jesus, please look with me at these things. Number one, it is of central importance to Christ that we do this, that we love the Lord and we love people. And then number two, relationships are necessary to discipleship. This is why in talking with many of you, I recognize, man, we got a good thing going here. We may not always feel like that, but on Sunday mornings, we are truly blessed with a wonderful worship team. Each of these families and people that are here, you guys are top notch. I love you guys, I really do. And we have so much going for us, but then I feel like there are so much in the way of other things that we can be doing to build those relationships among each other. Because I don't know about you, maybe you're like, I don't want to hang out with that gauge dude any other time than Sunday, so forget that. But there are other things that I think we can do and hang out weekly and more regularly that will help strengthen us in our relationships. And when you're recognizing that, what you're really saying is that you want to help each other grow as disciples. Because discipleship can't be done with you being the only one involved. It involves other people. But first, let's look today as it is of central importance to Christ, this loving God and people. And Jesus doesn't try to neglect or forget about how much God, you know, his Father and people matter to the disciple-making process. In fact, when some so-called religious elites or gurus tried to trick Jesus through a question, they found out clearly what is important to Jesus. It happened when in Matthew chapter 22 of the Bible, we discover that the Pharisees realized that Jesus silenced the Sadducees. You know, whenever I say Sadducees, you know, those religious leaders, I like to say they were sad, you see, right? Okay, that's an old one that's been used over and over, but they really were, all right? And what they believed, and they were so far from the truth of Jesus, and, you know, they didn't believe in uh, Christianity and what was going on in the movement that was happening. So the Pharisees thought, well, we're going to pick up where they left off, and so we'll trick this Jesus guy. So now let's pick up with verse 34 and go through verse 40. There we read, one of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And so they thought, well, he's going to go through the 110 laws or whatever that they followed, and he'll find one that's most important, and then we'll trick him up. But Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. But he didn't leave it at that. This, he said, is the first uh, and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. He said, love your neighbor as yourself. All the law, okay, what they had up to that point, the law, and the prophets hang on these two commandments, all right? So it doesn't have to be difficult. Love God, love people. 
So this statement of the Lord makes very clear as to how much love has to do with following God. It doesn't it make sense. You read in one part of the Bible, a verse that says God is love. Three words. God is love. So when you say I follow love, you are saying you follow God. So what Jesus is saying in his brief response to the Pharisees, Jesus pretty well summed up there the entire message of the Bible. You know, we can go through and say, you know, I have so much knowledge. I've read the Bible through and through, and you should. That's great. But did you know that all of your knowledge of the Bible and bragging about it, none of that's any good if you don't get the total gist of it? Because what God is saying through the whole Bible is that everything in it, every word points to love. Because Jesus is love. And so then what the Bible really is saying to each of us is that it's all about loving God and loving people. In other words, you can read the Bible, and I'm going to say this again, you can read it all you want, and you should read it. But if it's not with the lens of love, you will never truly get it. I remember back in the day in Indiana Wesleyan, one time I met this guy who I really liked the guy, he was a Calvinist, meaning he believes that God chooses those that are going to go to heaven and hell, so it doesn't matter what you do or what you believe. We don't believe that, trust me, we do not teach that at all. But he was bragging because he said, Gage, you know, I'm going to go home over winter break. We had a month off, and he said, I'm going to read the whole Bible. And he was trying to say how that would make him a better Christian because I wasn't going to go home and read the whole Bible in that month time span. But can I tell you, if you're bragging about the amount of time you read the Bible, then you're probably missing the entire message and meaning of the Bible. It's about love, not about how much knowledge you can gain. Taken further, I like how Dr. Warren Haynes put it when he wrote, the entire Bible, think about this, the entire Bible, every word, every phrase, Every thought, every passage, every poem, every song, every story, every person, and every prophecy depends completely on two commandments. Love God, love people. That's it. You don't believe me? Ask God to show you and share with you by reading it what he wants you to know. And you really will see that everything in it is about loving God and loving people. So to magnify his love to the lost, Jesus was laser focused on two key outcomes to walk in his footprints. What were they? He was developing leaders and reaching new people. And so we as modern day disciples should not think that it's any different for us today as it is our focus. Just as Christ trained up a few and he reached the new, let it be said that we want to emulate that same kind of life. All right? When there are people you come into contact with, those are discipleship opportunities, people that are in your circle of influence. You were never meant to try to have to reach everybody, but think about where you are each week and those people that you can begin speaking with, having conversations with, training up eventually to be disciples. Because making disciples goes beyond me, myself and I type thinking. All right, it goes beyond that. I meant to put that there, okay? Uh, making disciples, I got really small, goes beyond me, myself, and I type thinking. Remember when I said we live in a culture and at a time in which comfort, we seem to make that the thing that we worship? And that causes us, though, to be inward focused instead of outward focused. And basically, and I love putting things simply, to make a disciple, you teach others to love and follow Jesus. So Calvary will be successful in its outreach and growth if we do two things well. Number one, develop leaders. Number two, reach new people. That's it. 
Because Jesus did that. He showed us the example and what would result as an outcome if we were willing to do that ourselves. But number two, you can't do any of this if you aren't willing to have relationships with other people. Because relationships are necessary, they are essential to discipleship. So it's more than information that we're wanting to have with other people. You can share a lot of information with people. You can overload, overwhelm them with all of these things. This is what a Christian is. This is what a Christian does. But if you're not seeking transformation, then you're not being the disciple God wants you to be. You can learn more about the Bible. And I've already said this, but I'm saying it again. And what being a Christian truly means but to make disciples, sitting in a class, collecting biblical knowledge, well, that's not discipleship. You know, that's why, you know, we say we need discipleship classes. All right, discipleship classes don't make disciples. Living with someone in relationship and getting to know them and walking with them about the life of Jesus and really having an impact on them, that's discipleship. Because if all you're doing is sitting in a class to gain biblical knowledge, well, you're just sitting in a class collecting biblical knowledge. That's not discipleship. Discipleship is you taking steps towards putting that information to practice and helping other people learn to walk with Jesus. That's what being a disciple is. And that should help you to know this, every Christian can make disciples. All of you. None of you are exempt from his calling because God has empowered and equipped all of you to do this. It's not a spiritual gift reserved for only a few elite super Christians. All right? It's not like, okay, Gage is a pastor. So that means he is a super Christian and he can go and make disciples, but I'm not qualified to do that. No, you can't use that excuse. All of you are. And that's why I'm going to be very clear here, starting next week in my next message, The Value of a Name, I'm going to give us a real practical first step, and I'm going to challenge every one of you following that message to do this that next week. What is that? To do what? I'll talk about that, so you better come back to hear it. But know that this discipleship calling is for all of us. So what you learned, therefore, as a Christian, did you know being a disciple means you share it with others? You don't say, oh, I just learned something new. I'm going to hide it. I'm going to go behind that rock. I'm going to go behind somewhere else so no one else knows what I'm learning. No, you share it. You pass it on. So in order to hone in concerning how to be a better disciple maker, you got to be willing to learn. You got to be willing to understand the truths that are present in the Bible. Just as every world champion athlete has to develop their skills, they start like everybody else. All right, goo goo gaga, crawling, okay, all that gotta go through, pooping in diapers and all that. They don't just come out and say, I'm potty trained. All right, we know that's not true, right, honey? God, I remember those days, training Nathaniel and Kate, well, not training, okay, you know, changing the diaper. And, you know, as boys, you learn if you don't remember, you know, if you don't immediately cover it up, okay, it, it pees out. And, you know, and so you learn, okay, you got to go through that process. They didn't come out, I wish they did, saying, I'm potty trained, you never have to worry about it. All right, these things, it, it, it's just part of life, all right? But it's like the Olympic athletes. You know, they didn't come out and say, I'm going to be a world champion athlete, and because I said it, it's going to be. Friends, I assure you that each of them didn't just get there by reading books. They had to work hard and they had to hone in on particular skills. So be the difference maker. This is point D. Be the difference maker to reach disciple making potential. It's been said that successful people do what unsuccessful people are not willing to do. And so I'm really hoping to challenge us. We can speak big church. We can talk about big things. I can do that from, you know, here uh, in this sermon, and I can make it sound good. But if we aren't doing what we're saying we're going to do, then that doesn't matter. 
I'm just a man standing up here giving you something that sounds good, but then we never take it further. God doesn't want that. God wants you to take what we're learning, and he says, pass it on. Because there is a world in need, a world that is hurting, that needs to know what I'm talking about. They need to know that we love them and that we care for them. That we are a people that recognize we too were like them. We too had no hope. We too were helpless. But now we know one who says, I will be your rock. I will be your cornerstone. Even when everything else seems like there is no hope. Even when everyone else says, give up, give in. Even if that means you just uh, throw in the towel on life. I am here to tell you there is one who will help you when no one else can. And he is the one that we need to be telling other people about. So here's the challenge. Here's the final thing that I would like to speak with you about. I believe now that we've got a glimpse, just even a small uh, little bit uh, as far as information as to what the heartbeat of discipleship looks like. And now I believe we are ready to start looking at practical steps to what it will take to be fruitful in our labors in the ministry. Because I know none of us likes that feeling where we feel like we're doing a lot, but our wheels are just spinning. We're not seeing the fruit that we're hoping to see. And so what we'll be looking at step by step is some real things that if we have the love of God when we're doing them, and we're doing them because he's calling us to do that, I believe without a doubt we're going to be seeing the fruit of our labors. So I invite you, each one of you, to remember that with the Holy Spirit as our guide and with the help of the wisdom of others, let's begin looking at the simple steps we can take to be successful at disciple making. And that we'll begin doing next week. Um, and so I'll be speaking in the next several weeks about how we can do that. But next week on the value of a name, and what that has to do with discipleship. Because often I really believe we go about saying, good to see you. You know, it's, uh, you know, we don't remember a person's name, but you know, we're like, oh, wow, what was that you said? Or, um, you know, uh, I forget that I'm gonna make them think I remember their name. No, I really uh, take for granted where I'm like, you know, I just expect people to come and if we see new people, I'll just go and say, hi, how you doing? And then never really even ask them their name. And that's not good to do. And I'll be honest with you, as I've seen some of you, and, I, and I've been intentional with asking your names, and I've been walking around more to my neighbors even, and trying to make sure, what was your name? And, you know, that means a lot to people when you really care enough to know another person's name. You may not think it does, but it really does. And so I'll be talking about what that has to do with discipleship next week, as we talk about the value of a name. But even more, what you're to do with that name. You're to pray over that name. All right, you're to really let that person know you care about them, but we'll, we'll talk about that next week. But today we wanna to end with a challenge and say, Father, give me faith. Worship team, if you wanna come up and help us with that, because ultimately what this is about is faith. All right, it's about trusting God, because if you don't have faith, all right, it doesn't matter what you do, you won't see the results at least the way God wants you to. All right, that's why grace is such a beautiful thing. It doesn't take you working. It takes you believing and trusting God. So my prayer, and I know the worship team is going to do great at this. They're going to help lead us in this song that I pray will prove to be a great challenge for us to want to have faith. Father, give me faith. Is it just you, I guess? Never mind, I was wrong. But uh, if you'll end us, praise God, today with this song. And I'm going to ask that Angie will uh, end us also in prayer as we beg God to give us faith.
corner, I just wanted to also say, you know, I sensed as I was uh, up in my front pew just singing this song that I know it's something that I struggle with at times, and I just ask God to give me faith. And I felt that challenge this morning as I was just standing there, and I thought about each of you, and I feel like I'm not alone, and I just want to encourage you, if you're one that still feels like, you know, you want that faith that it takes, if you understand life is hard, and sometimes you just, you don't feel like you have a lot of faith. But you want to start living for God, living completely sold out to Him. You want to make that commitment to grow, to, to be the disciple He's called you to be. If that's you, and you feel like you're needing that, I do want to encourage you to come up. Because by doing that, it's not just, we're not worried about the numbers, or, but you're really seeing, you know, I, I just want God's help in this. And I want the people that are here to know, they need to be praying for me this week. By name. And I just ask that if that's you, that you'll come and, you know, you'll lay it all down to God and say, you know, God, give me faith. So I'm just going to ask that we're, we're going to give you a few moments to come up if you would like to again. You know, and just sing one more time, give me faith. Give me faith to trust what you say. That your good and your love is great. that we need, Father, to just be disciples for you. Yes. Such a difficult task, Lord, but we know with your strength and your wisdom and your knowledge, Lord, and your boldness that uh, we can come forward, Lord, and um, take people to you. Mm. So many interferences get in the way. Just so many just struggles, Lord, in life, but Man, with you, we can get through it. So, Lord, give us that faith that we need today. We ask that you bless each individual in this house today, and Lord, all those watching online, and just all those struggling with any uh, addiction or loneliness, sadness, depression. Lord, I ask that you put your healing touch on them in this moment. We thank you, and we give this day to you. In Jesus' name, all God's people say. Let's probably how they had it work.